What is up guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at some interesting champion synergies. So how like champions work together in ways you probably hadn't thought about before. Before we start, this is a video with Pro Guide, so thank you to them for helping to edit this video. You can check out their guides, including a few of my own down in the description. Anyway, make sure to like this video if you did, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know if you fancy seeing any of these where I use them with my friends and leave your kind of weird synergies down in the comments. I don't really want to go over the super obvious ones like the Oriana and Malphite Wombo combo or the Amumu Misfortune ults or even Yasuo and Lee Sin. Let's go for some lesser known. The first one is something that's been around in the game for a while but I guess the champions aren't really that popular so it's never been that widely known about. So Cassiopeia's main damage source is a twin of fangs right that's where most of it comes from. It does more damage and heals her when against poison targets. It's no joke either it's double the damage and it heals the 25 plus 10 percent AP per fang. This is why you normally poison targets first before using it with your Q right but what if there was an easier way? Sinj and Twitch's poison both activate that double damage and heal from Cassiopeia. It doesn't have to be her poison. Sinj can literally run in, flip someone, and run around them with his poison trail, and Cassio just has to use her fangs over and over. Twitch is even easier. As soon as he auto attacks someone, the damage is activated on objectives as well. This is great. The poison is always on the Baron, so you can just spam all day. This also works with Teemo, I believe, but let's be honest, I'm not going to play Teemo to test that one out. I'm just kidding, though. I got a friend to test it, and it works on his passive autos and the shrooms. It even works on the grunt buff you get from smiting, the one that poisons people who hit a jungler. That's not too reliable though I guess the main ones are going to be the Twitch and the Singed. With Cassio becoming more popular now and Twitch as well, this is a way to make Cassio a lot easier to play and increase the damage output. Fun fact as well, before we move on, Ash had a very similar interaction. Auto attacks before her rework got apply the chill effect which enabled Anivia's E to crit for the extra damage. Unfortunately now her autos apply a frost effect which is different though her ultimate still does so you you can actually ult someone and Anivia can use her E on that target for the bonus damage. Number two is with Anivia actually. This one is a little more known but you can pull off some really cool combos with it. Her wall is going to act like terrain. That means you can treat it like any other wall in the game pretty much. Here we're going to be looking at two though. So Graves and Vayne. You can fire your Q as Graves and Anivia wall to get it to explode instantly for a lot of burst damage. Imagine Anivia using her ult and E then you Q and ult. Someone is going to die instantly there. Vayne is another one who can use the wall by condemning someone into it for a guarantee guaranteed stun. Both of them are kind of cool things, but they're a little bit straightforward, right? I guess you can do this with a bunch of things like Jarvan or a zero wall. So what's so special about Anivia? Anivia is one where you can actually cast the wall after the other spell. So after the Condemn or the Graves Q, and if you're quick enough, it'll put the wall down behind them and stun or explode instantly. This can lead to some really sick combos and surprise damage. Just imagine a Vayne walking up to you and condemning you, right? Doesn't seem like much until you're flying back and suddenly an Anivia wall pops up behind you and you're stunned. There is basically no time to react to these and yes it's kind of cool and useful to know anyway but that synergy can do a lot more than you probably think it does. The next one is one I've used a few times and it's actually disgusting like it's not fair at all the I'm not gonna die but I'm gonna kill you anyway strat. So Kindred's ultimate is super annoying right four seconds of not being able to die plus you get a heal at the end of it. What if we can make that even longer? What if our team just didn't die afterwards? Tarek's new ult is two and a half seconds of invulnerability after two and a half seconds of a delay so if we activate this halfway through the Kindred Adult, then we can actually pop out, heal, and still have two seconds where we can't be killed, but we can kill all of those low health people around us. This is insanely cool if you pull it off, but there are a lot of things that could go wrong. Trust me, like I've had a Gragas ping me out with his barrel before and a Zip push us out. Thankfully, that stuff doesn't happen too often though, so you should be fine really. Remember as well, Tarek's ultimate prevents damage to everyone in it. It's similar in size to Kindred's ult as long as you hug together as a team and they know it's going to happen. There's not much the enemy team can do really. It's one of the most frustrating things to play against in this entire video, but also one of the most satisfying if you're the one pulling it off. If unlike me, you actually have a friend to try this out, then do it. It's so good when you actually get it to work. You can also throw this in with a few other things to make it even more interesting. So like a Shen for the AoE dodge for a few seconds after that as well. You can have some crazy AoE damage like a Kennen or a Victor to really screw with them after the Kindred ult. Even for like the ultimate BM, right? These ones are pretty fun. A new new channel that can't be interrupted during the Tarek ultimate or a Heimerdinger ultimate turret blasting everyone around why you can't be here. There are a bunch of funny things you can do to add on to this. I'm sure you guys probably have better ideas than I do. So now we're getting into the slightly more serious ones. These are actually seen a bit in diamond rank queues, especially when people are pre-made together and they have a specific idea of what they want to do in the game. Zillion and Rengar is a combo that is famous in Korea, especially because teams use it a lot in the LCK professional games and have a lot of success with it. The idea is that you make the stealth jump of Rengar even more deadly by attaching a bomb onto him, which explodes as he lands. This is going to take a little bit 
bit of practice with the timing, but it's not just the bomb, it's also the speed up which makes him so fast and gives the enemy a really small window to react before they're just screwed. It's so hard to play around this, the added damage if timed right is literally no counterplay, but the ideal situation would be like you place a bomb on Rengar, you speed him up, he dives in and the bomb explodes literally as he lands. Combined with that burst he has, I don't think any carry target can actually survive that. It's a combo that I've actually used before, honestly. Not many people know this, but I ranked an account from gold to diamond just by playing Rengar last season because I actually find him kind of fun. And this is something I used with a friend a couple of times. It's really good, not only because it's so hard to deal with, well, you can't actually really deal with it if you do it correctly, but you can literally just carry as a two-man unit. Rengar is going to jump in, blow someone up with the bomb, then Zillion revives you as you fight the rest of the team. And by that point, you really should have won. If you don't want a team fight, you just run around together and constantly get picks on the side lanes. Either way, you've got a massive advantage in the game. Okay, so the next one has been used a fair amount recently, but it's kind of flown under the radar a bit more. This can seriously be devastating though. Hegrim's damage scales with move speed, right? His passive is a percentage of his bonus move speed as attack damage and scales from like 15% all the way to 30%. If you look in the LCS, whenever Hegrim is picked, Karma is also normally the chosen mid or support. And a big reason why is because it adds so much damage to him, especially when he's charging at someone. If you thought Hegrim was broken right now anyway in this patch, try this and then he'll definitely be broken. Karma is one option. She is the shield speed up, which can be used as he's charging in. Lulu has the whimsy speed up. Zillion has a speed up. Siva has our ultimate speed up as well. There are probably a ton more, but you can literally design an entire comp around buffing his move speed. There is like a cap on it. So stacking it isn't going to just like infinite make him faster or more devastating, I guess, at the same rate, but it will still pack a serious punch. Even just one or two of these will make a big difference. This is partly why like home guard TP Hecarim is such an amazing thing. It buffs his damage by a ton, but I guess even just using these things will allow him to get into fights easier, especially to the back line, which is also a really good thing. Next time you're watching the LCS, look out for this combo and watch how much damage it does when he flies into the back line with his charge. He's probably going to one-shot someone. So another one we've seen a little bit of before is Zillion and Bard, the ultimate death trap. We all know that Bard has an amazing long-range ult, right, that can set up a bunch of things and afterwards he can maybe get a stun, but there's a way to almost get a guaranteed stun afterwards. We're not actually talking about the Bard stun though. When someone is caught in golden, Zillion can place two bombs on the floor right on top of them and as soon as they get out of the bard ult they'll instantly be stunned and take a massive amount of damage from the double bomb. It's really hard to ever play around this and it's something that can honestly just win games by itself if you do it correctly. Think about how many people are alone or too far forward in your games. How many are so easy to catch with a good ult? On its own a bard ult is nice but it doesn't really help you win the fight or kill anything at least but adding the Zillion double stun on top is crazy. You can also just do this in a team fight. I mean it's easier to catch one person alone right but if you get three or four you can double stun the entire group of them as they stop being golden and that is definitely a quick way to turn a fight in your favor. You can add a bunch of things to make this more interesting as well. Try a Nunu ult channeling the entire time. Not only can they do nothing while they are trapped in the bard ult but the zillion bomb stun will keep them in place afterwards ready to eat that entire fully charged absolute zero to the face. Anything AoE is actually a lot of fun with this. A Kenan ult would probably be the boring kill everyone version. Galio is a bit more interesting. Maybe even a fiddlesticks or a misfortune ult afterwards on top while they're stunned. I actually tried this with an Alawi as well with all those tentacles smashing the entire team from our ultimate was just hilarious. It was so much damage and they didn't stand a chance. Now this one is old school, but coming back a lot right now at high relo and is definitely so strong. If you ever queue up as an AD carry in top lane or jungle on top lane, you should definitely give this a try. Shane can ultimate down to save his allies, right? But that's no fun really. We want to be taking the fight to them in the most ninja-like way possible. You can't really become much more of a ninja than by going in stealth, which is exactly what you do when you play with Twitch. Twitch is like an assassin anyway. You sneak up on people when they're alone and snowball the entire game by picking people off. This becomes 10 times harder to actually deal with if he brings a friendly Shen along with him as well. You stealth up, you pop the Shen out and jump out of stealth as he taunts the enemy you're after. This has been around and used for years, but it always becomes very popular when both Twitch and Shen are strong, which is happening right now. You may not think this is that special or anything, but once you get boned by it, you'll definitely understand why. It's so hard to deal with and you can get the game spiraling out of control, basically just by using that combo. Literally nowhere is going to be safe on the map when you're using this. If you're alone, then a Twitch and Shen could be right on top of you. The only good thing is 
that Shenzhou has a long cooldown, so you're not going to get 24 7 screwed. You can do this with a lot of other champions. Evelyn and Rengar are the best ones for the stealth version, though, as they go to engage while stealth, you Shen ult, and you'll end up in the middle of the fight with them. For Evelyn, you can actually appear behind the entire whole team and dive in to catch their backline with a taunt. For Rengar, you can appear in the middle of everyone and taunt the target Rengar is trying to kill, so there's no chance to get away. Remember that Zillion Rengar synergy we talked about earlier? If you add a Shen into that, it gets even better. You're going to be diving on with a Shen, a bomb, and the Rengar. You can do this with a bunch of non stealth champions as well, though, in kind of cool ways. Like Twisted Fate ult with a Shen ult for a double gank. You can have Nocturne flying in with a Shen ult, or even a Pantheon ulting down a lane and landing with a Shen next to him. There are a ton of combinations, and all of them have a really big impact on the game. And if you can pull this off, you'll probably increase your chances of winning. So that is going to wrap up this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your weird combinations or synergies down in the comments. Remember to check out Pro Guides, but that is going to be all for this video. So I'll leave you with the robots.